Hi guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. Providing an adequate number of hiding places in your Boas enclosure is critical to its health and well-being. There are quite a few different ways of providing hiding places. Today I want to show you a few of the different hiding places I use for my own Boas, including some that are very easy to make yourself at home. So these are very easy, inexpensive hiding places that you can make for your own snakes. I'll also take out a few of my favorite boas to share with you today. In their natural environments, boas are basically ambush predators. They'll find a hiding place and they'll just lie there waiting for a prey animal to happen to walk by and then they'll strike the prey item, constrict it, and feed themselves. They don't really move a whole lot in the wild in general. So in the captivity, it's important to provide hiding places so the boa can replicate its natural behavior, which is programmed into its DNA. You want to have a hiding place that's gonna be fairly tight. You want something that's not that much larger than the size of the boa. So when the boas are in the hiding places, they like to have uh, the sensation of their body being up against the side of the hiding place. They like that tucked in or that you know confined feeling because it makes them feel safe. So you don't want a hiding place that's going to be too big for the boa and have lots of empty space in there. And you should plan on providing larger hiding places as the boas grow, but in general they shouldn't be larger, that much larger than the size of the boa. So in general you want at least two hiding places for each of your uh, snake cages. You want one that's gonna be over the hot spot, and you want another one that's gonna be on the cool side of the cage or the tub. And that way the boa doesn't have to choose between being in its preferred uh, temperature range and between being in a hiding place. So it can either be in a hiding place or can be out exposed in both the cool end or the hot side, the hot, uh, over the hot spot of the cage. So as I mentioned, there's a huge number of things that you could use for hiding places, both naturalistic type of uh, items, as well as synthetic or plastic or artificial types of items. And in general, I use both in each of my boa cages. Each of them has an advantage. But depending on what type of cage you have, you might want to select your hiding places to fit into the, the uh, particular decor of your cage. For example, if you have an all-naturalistic looking vivarium, you probably don't want a plastic or artificial hiding place. You probably want to pick wood or you know, natural looking hiding places. And today I'm going to show you some of the both natural and the artificial types of hiding places that I use for my own boas. So the preferred naturalistic hiding place I use in a lot of my boa enclosures is cork bark. And I like cork bark for a number of reasons. So this is the bark of a cork tree, a cork oak tree. Um, it's also used for making, traditionally for making wine corks. But you can get this stuff in several different shapes. So uh, you can buy these rounds, which is basically the whole bark as it occurs across the whole branch of the tree or the limb of the tree. And the rounds are useful if you want to have a larger boa. They can hide within the tube itself. They can be used that way. But what's nice with this is you can actually cut this into several different ways. You could either cut it right down the center for these halves and get something like this, which is kind of like a hiding place for a medium-sized boa. You could also cut more or less flat pieces. And the flatter pieces have less height there's just a very tight space, and that's probably good for a smaller boa. It's going to get in there under the smaller piece of cork, and it's going to feel nice and safe and secure, pressed up against the cork with its back right up against the top there. The cork bark is very lightweight. It's not very uh, dense, which is great because if it happens to fall on your boa, it's not going to cause injury. And other types of wood are considerably more dense and there's more of a risk of your boa being injured by the wood, whereas the cork bark is quite a bit safer. And then the nice thing about cork bark, it's got this very rough texture to it. And, and boas, as you probably know, 
they have this need for tactile sensation. They like to grab onto something and they feel really safe when they're constricted around something or wrapped against something. Um, so with cork bark, the bow feels safe sitting on top of the cork bark because it's got this nice rough surface and the boa feels like it's, you know, can hold on and it's not in danger. But what's nice about this, it, although it's rough, it's not sharp. It, it can't injure your boa. Um, so it's kind of the best of both worlds. So cork bark is available commercially from a lot of different pet stores and vivarium supply stores. In fact, it does grow um, in California anyway, near where I live. And occasionally I can find logs of this cork bark and just strip it off, which is great. Um, unfortunately, you can't get it growing wild in most of the parts of the country, but you can buy it in your vivarium supply store. You can use other types of wood as well. If you have a convenient source of bark that's growing nearby you, and it, as I said, it's not too dense and it has good qualities for your snake cage. Another thing, you don't want bark that just falls apart like many tree bark does, whereas the cork bark stays together pretty well. If you do take any kind of bark or wood from the outdoors to use in your own uh, terrariums, just be sure that you properly sanitize it. And there's a lot of protocols online for how you can bake these types of things in the oven at a low temperature or use different uh, disinfecting agents to make sure that the bark from outside is clean enough for use in your uh, spoa's enclosure. So I'll include an appropriately sized piece of cork bark in each of my boas enclosures, but then I also use some plastic or synthetic types of hiding places. And there are a number of hide boxes you could buy commercially that are made of plastic, but it's also very, very easy and economical just to make your own. And you can make these plastic hiding boxes out of pretty much any opaque, uh, shallow plastic box or dish. And I'll show you just a few examples. So these are drawer organizers and I get them at the dollar store for a dollar each. They come in different sizes and you can see it's, they're really good dimensions for a hiding place for a small to medium sized boa. You know, they're maybe two inches deep and it's easy to just cut a hole in the side for an access door. I actually just use a soldering iron and I just melt out an appropriately sized door. I find that a lot easier than you know, trying to hacksaw uh, a door in or cut one with scissors. And it also leaves a nice smooth edge that's not sharp and it's not gonna injure the bow. And so these hiding places, this one is probably good for a boa up to maybe three, three feet or so. This one for a slightly smaller boa. Um, but these are almost identical to some of the commercially available hiding places. It's also the same black plastic, but, but you'll, you'll pay a lot more for one that you buy at a pet shop, of course. Um, so very easy to make out of drawer organizers. You could use any kind of a shallow uh, flower pot tray, something like that. So just a round dish that's a few inches deep and you just cut an appropriately sized hole for your boa to get access to. Let me show you a couple other ones I made. So this is actually a pan for changing your oil. It's just a thin plastic pan and it's about maybe four inches deep and about uh, I don't know, 15 or 16 inches in diameter. But I got this at the dollar store also for a dollar. And then I just cut a little access hole. And this works great for kind of a medium size bow up to maybe around five, five and a half feet. Um, the boas love to just go in there and they wrap up in a coil and they have their body up against the sides and it makes them feel nice and safe. It's nice and dark in there because it's black plastic. Um, and it just a great place for the boa to chill out and you know often when I'm feeding my boas I'll dangle the food right near the little door and the boa will just snap its head out really quickly and it's like a you know with a flash and in the blink of an eye it's just gone it's just you know really cool to watch them do their natural feeding behaviors like that for a boa that's a little bit larger you can use different sizes of cat litter pan so this one actually, guess where I got this? The dollar store for a dollar. 
This is kind of a medium small size cat litter pan, which I also burned a hole in the side with a soldering iron. But this will hold a larger bow up to probably six or seven feet. It's just going to be in there and it's going to feel nice and snug. And then for the really gigantic boas, you can get even bigger cat litter pans and various other types of plastic structures like this. And, you know, be creative. There's so many different ways you can make really functional hiding places for your boas. This is, these are just a few ideas to get you started. So I'm sure that many of you guys out there have other ways of making hiding places that you've made yourself. So I really would appreciate it if you would just comment below and just share with the group what those ideas are, just so we can all benefit from your experience. There's also a number of boxes and disposable paper items that you have around your house that make perfectly acceptable temporary hiding places for your boas. So if the obvious place to start are just boxes and you can find boxes of different sizes for crackers or cookies or cereal things like that you basically just want a box that's going to be relatively um, shallow so the snake can get in there and it feels nice and snug and you want one that's appropriate for the size of your boa so like this one would maybe be good for a three foot three to four foot boa so it's going to be nice and snug in there you can use, you know, a larger cereal box would be okay for something maybe four or five, six feet long, just so it's going to be in there nice and snug. And this might look like household trash to you, and you, you know, you might want to go to a zoo and see a boa lying in an old cereal box. But for the boas, they feel perfectly happy. Okay, you know, a boa in the wild is just going to hide under a convenient item that's going to provide it with security. Um, if they don't care how natural looking it is. In fact, many people who go hunting for snakes in the wild set up fields with old garbage and corrugated aluminum roofing and old you know, sheets of plywood and the snakes hide under that. They don't care what it looks like. So functionally these can be fine for your boas. The disadvantage is they don't really last that long. As soon as they get wet or the snake takes a crap inside of it, you have to dispose of them. You can't clean these out, obviously. But most of us have so many boxes piling up, you know, why not recycle them and use them as snake hiding places? So another, th another tip that I've used before for baby snakes is actually just to use crumpled paper. You can even use crumpled newspaper. You just ball it up like this and you put it in the tub and the snake feels comfortable kind of going underneath it and wrapping around it and hiding within the paper. It's no different from a snake in the wild that would be hiding in leaves or, you know, leaf litter, things like that. Another advantage with, the, with crumpled newspaper is you can spray it with your sprayer with water and it will raise the humidity in the tub just to ensure that your snake isn't going to have any issues with shedding. Again, this may not look like the best thing and it might not look like it's natural, but from the snake's point of view, they're going to be perfectly happy sheltering among, you know, su su uh, hiding places that are basically leftover garbage for us. To end the video, I thought I'd take out a few of my favorite snakes, which I may not have had in previous videos, just to share with you. So this is a 2014 Holdback Male Suriname True Red Tail Boa Constrictor Constrictor. This guy is about five and a half years old, approaching six years now. And so this guy is basically a young adult male who's ready for breeding, prime shape for breeding. You can see he has a very uh, compressed muscular look to him. So this guy has been slow grown and he's maybe five feet long, which is what I would expect for a young adult male Suriname boa to be. Um, I always see these pictures of these true red tails and the owners claims that they're a year or two old and they're just way, way too big. And they're all round looking, almost like a stuffed sausage. So you don't want your boa to look like that. You want it to be nice and lean and muscular. So this particular animal is a hold back from my first litter of true red tails. And one of the reasons I held him back was because he had a huge amount of contrast and also because of his saddles. And if you look, he does not have peak saddles. And there's this misconception out there among some people that all true red tails, especially Surinams, have the peak saddles. 
and that if the boa doesn't have the peak saddles, it's not a red tail, and if it does, it is a red tail, and that's not true at all. In fact, most red tails don't have the peak saddles. It's really something that's been selected for in captivity to the point where peak saddle boas in captivity are much more common than they would be in the wild because people like that look. And then in addition, there are some non-red tail boas, boa imperator, that can have some peak saddles as well. So what's interesting is that in the litter that produced this guy, some of the animals had moderate saddles, some of them had really nice peak saddles, and some like this guy had non-peak saddles. Both of the parents had kind of moderately peak saddles. So the saddles is obviously genetic, but you can have a litter of animals that has a different range of the saddles. And I actually kept two males. I kept this male who has the round saddles with no peaks, and then I kept the nicest peaked male saddle, or uh, male with peak saddles, who I actually right now I have him breeding uh, with a female. So I'm hoping for babies from him later this year. Here's one more holdback animal that I'm pretty sure I haven't shown in a video before. This is a 2018 holdback female Honduran fire belly boa. And you probably may have seen some my other holdbacks from this litter. They're mostly patternless. They have the striping on their um, neck and their tail. This particular animal has the more normal wild type saddles. Um, but the reason I held this animal back is it has such a huge amount of contrast between the saddles and the background color. So you can see these Honduran fire bellies have this greenish bronzish coloration and you know darker brownish red saddles and kind of this um, dark maroonish reddish tail. You know just beautiful looking animal. They also have this reddish orange belly. I believe this girl is in, going in the shed so she's a little dull right now but the Red on the belly of the fire belly becomes more apparent as they get bigger. And then another really cool thing about the Honduran fire bellies is the head. They have this really short uh, head that's really wide at the top and very short snout, very short round snout. And the eyes are really, really cool. They have these really big, prominent eyes that kind of bulge out. And they're this beautiful orangish brown color. You know, just gorgeous eyes in a boa. So these guys get to be about uh, four to six feet long. They're kind of a semi-dwarf boa, but just an unusual and very interesting boa that's quite rare in captivity, the Honduran fire belly boa. So I hope this video was helpful. As always, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to reach out to me or you can write them below in the comments. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.